Today we're talking about the generic collection Q. And by generic, I mean that it has the uh, angle brackets after the data type. And the T represents a type you can specify a compile time. So I could have Q int or Q string. And it would operate appropriately on whatever type I put in the generic type. And it's a collection like uh, a number of other collections we've talked about, like list, uh, generic list, generic stack, which I'm actually going to talk about in the next video. And then there's non-generic queue and non-generic stack, which basically operate with objects, which is kind of a pain because you have to keep typecasting the object all the time. And in a lot of ways, are much harder to work with than the generic types. And Q is what's known as FIFO, first in, first out. Stack, which we're going to talk about in the next video, is what's known as LIFO, which is last in, uh, first out. And the analogy that I always hear is that LIFO, which is a stack, is like a stack of dishes, where you stack up dishes and then when you take a dish off, you take the last one you put on. So the first one you put on, it will be the last one to come off. Whereas with FIFO, it's like a line for, say, a theater or something, where the first person in line is the first person to get in the theater. And it, they, they go in the theater in the same order they got into the line. In fact, the line in England is called a queue, as people listening in England will know, assuming I ever get any. And uh, the methods we're going to talk about in this video are NQ, which puts things into the queue, DQ, which takes things out of the queue, and PEAK, which is a non-destructive uh, way of looking at the first thing in the queue. Uh, there's about a million other methods, so if you're really interested in queues, and they are useful in certain contexts, especially things like communication. Uh, I'd l just go to Google and type in uh, C sharp Q, Q U E U E, and get all the different types of methods and properties. The only property we're going to look at in this is count, but I think uh, this video will give you a general feel for how Q works, which I think is the main thing most people need. Well, the form for this program is just a large multi-line list box. And once again, we're using a monospace font so things will line up nicely. And using a pen text to put different lines on there. In effect, we're emulating a console program in a text box that way. And everything's done in the form load. So I initially create a uh, string, which is a number of values separated by slashes. And then I turn this string an array using the uh, string split uh, method and using a slash as the delimiter to do the split. So this will create an array where the first element is 1, the second element is 2, the third element is 3, and so on. And then I have a for loop which goes for the length of the array which will be 6, and basically puts every element in the array into the queue uh, via the nq method. And the queue's defined up here as q uh, angle bracket string angle bracket, which now defines the generic queue as a string type, and then uh, instantiated in the usual way. I'll show actually a faster way of doing this in a later video where you can just put the whole array in at once rather than have to do it in queue. But this demonstrates the in queue command or in queue method. And then I clear the display we were just looking at and I append uh, current queue and I display the count in the current queue with the count property of the queue. So I have q1.count and then just a two string to convert it to a string for display purposes. <coughs> and then I do a for each where I get a range variable 
that takes each member of the queue in the order they're in and displays it and puts it on a new line with the slash n new line character. So this basically displays the count of the queue and the, all the contents of the queue. And then we do a DQ command, which will take the first item off the queue. And uh, then I do the same thing I did before. I show the dequeued item, which we get the value by with the assignment. And then I go through in a loop and show what the queue now looks at, like, which will look different because the first member will now be removed. It'd be a count of one less, and there'll be a different first member. And then I do the non-destructive look at the first element of the queue, the dot peak uh, method. And once again, go through a routine where I show the peaked item that we pulled off, just looking at it, but not taking it off. And then I go through a loop and uh, put out what the current queue currently looks like, along with the count of the queue. So if we compile and run this, you see you get the initial number of items is 6 and the first one in the FIFO queue is 1 next one is 2, next one is 3 and so on and then we do the dequeue method and get the 1 so we remove the 1 item from the the FIFO queue and then once again we go through the queue and the new way it looks is it's 5 items instead of 6 the first item is 2 now instead of 1 and then three is the second item, four is the third, and so on. And then we do a peek and look at two, which if we did a DQ here, it would take the two off the, the queue, out of the queue. But in this case, it's non-destructive. So when we do a list of the state of the queue, we see we still have five items, and the first item is still two. So I think this gives you a good feel for what a queue is like and how it works. And as I say, there's a, a ton of methods and properties. So if you want to get more into queues, I, I do a Google C Sharp queue. And especially look at the uh, Microsoft uh, knowledge base and things like that. Well, I hope you learned a lot from this video and enjoyed it. And I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.